enter in your PA school personal statement and not exceed 5,000 characters. Hey, what's up guys? My name is John and I'm an emergency medicine physician assistant. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the CASPA application cycle. And we're gonna go step by step on how to apply to PA school using CASPA. I'm also gonna share a few common mistakes that people make when they do their CASPA application. I'll be sharing all that at the end of the video, so stay until the end. On this channel, I'm doing pre-PA physician assistant related videos in addition to wealth and finance related topics that interest me. So if you guys enjoy that sort of content, don't forget to subscribe. If you could just please take a quick millisecond and hit that like button down below, really helps the channel out so much, really helps us get seen by more people on YouTube. CASPA is where you will submit your application to the majority of PA programs out there, a centralized service that these PA programs use for students applying to PA school. CASPA created a timeline on how you should proceed with your application to PA school. They recommend that before you apply or even create an account, you should research what PA programs you wanna to apply to, figure out what their deadlines are, and ensure that you reach all of their prerequisites. You should also notify anybody who's writing you a letter of recommendation that the CASPA application cycle is open and it will send them an email where they can submit your letters of recommendation. You don't wanna fall behind on those. You wanna give yourself at least three months before your PA school deadlines to create an account on CASPA and to start entering in information. You wanna have at least 10 to 12 weeks before your deadline for your transcripts to come in and for CASPA to verify your transcripts. And you want to be submitting your application six to eight weeks before the deadline because CASPA needs a couple weeks to verify the information as well as you also want to be looking at your CASPA application to see if there are any errors or supplemental things you forgot to add or just to add up any information and start getting correspondences from the PA program. So that's the timeline. You don't want to wait until the last second to submit your information. Going through step by step on how to fill out your CASPA application, guys, I'm going to run you through everything. First and foremost, you want to go to CASPA and create an account. There, they'll ask you basic information such as your name and your email address, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You wanna fill all of that out and check out your email. Then you will actually log into CASPA and answer a few questions, like if you're in the European Union, when are you looking for PA programs and if you wanna receive any text notifications. Before you can start your application, CASPA will ask you to select at least one PA program. Now, ideally, you'll be applying to my recommendations always 10 to 15 PA programs, and CASPA even indicates that the average number of PA programs people apply to is seven. You don't have to enter in all seven at this time if you haven't figured out where you wanna go exactly just yet. And you could always come back to this screen and fill out which programs you want to apply to at a later point in your application. They just want you to have at least one. So on this page, you'll see all of the PA programs listed alphabetically. You'll see information such as what state they're in, what type of degree are they offering in addition to their deadline. The schools have three different types of deadlines. Green means that the program wants you to have everything submitted to CASPA and reviewed prior to their deadline. It's the hardest deadline to breach, right? You have to have everything good to go for the school on the date of the deadline. After that, you have the blue programs, which means they want everything submitted to CASPA. However, they will wait for CASPA to verify it. That's not really your fault if CASPA takes a long time to verify all the information. So those are a little bit more lenient. And then you have the orange deadlines, which means that the program wants you to have your transcript and at least two reference letters by the deadline. However, you can add more information after the fact and they are not penalizing you for the CASPA verification process and how long that takes. So once you confirm which programs you want to go to, you will now see your CASPA dashboard, which is broken down into four main sections. Personal information section, the academic history, the supporting information section, and the program materials area. And here you'll see I selected a random university, Advent Health. I have no relationship to Advent Health. It, they were the first one alphabetically on the list, so I just picked them for this example. Under program materials, you'll see that they want me to upload a resume and also indicate which programs correspond to their prerequisites from my college transcripts. I actually really like this. So each program now on CASPA has their own kind of homepage where you can find out more information about the university without having to go to their website. 
And I remember when I was applying to PA school, we didn't necessarily have this for each school. Under personal information, you have biographical information, which is pretty self-explanatory. It involves sharing information such as where you were born, your citizenship or visa information, family information, environmental factors, and other information. What I found very interesting under the environmental factors section, they're going to ask you such things as what country and city you grew up in, the area you lived in is medically underserved, as well as things like your family's level of income, and if you worked before the age of 18. And I find these questions pretty interesting. I'm guessing some schools out there really want to emphasize picking up people in medically underserved areas. Under other information, they ask you things such as which languages you speak, what specialty you'd like to enter into, prior military experience, or any prior academic infractions. Once again, guys, just be honest with all the questions. This whole part of your CASPA application, you could probably complete within half an hour, an hour max. It's pretty straightforward. The next section is your academic history and that will take probably the most amount of time. Here you will enter in what high school and college you attended and then there's a section where you can upload your official college transcript. You will need to enter in every course you've taken and it has to match up to your official transcripts. CASPA says they have a team that verifies the information and they essentially line up your transcripts with what was entered into the program. What's super duper important with this transcript entry is that if you make a mistake, it will cause delays in your application. So you have to do this perfectly. Even CASPA says, enter transcript information exactly as it appears on your transcript. Your transcript details will be reviewed by a quality assurance team. If there are any inaccuracies, your application will be sent back to you and this will result in delays submitting your application. If you don't want any delays in your application and you wanna save the most laborious task to CASPA, they have a professional service where they will enter in your transcript information for you. I personally did not use this service. I entered in all the stuff myself and had no issues. But if you feel like you're gonna make a mistake and you want somebody else to do it, they offer that. It's not mandatory at all. If you're entering in all of your courses yourself, you need to add the course abbreviation and title. You need to say how many credits it was and then what grade you earned. Personally, I would go semester by semester. So when I did this, I started with my freshman year and just went down chronologically by semester and then all my postgrad courses. As you're entering your classes too, they will tell you what programs you selected and what are their prerequisites here on that page and just make sure that you can line them up. Say Bio 101 was this biology course, Bio 201 was this biology course, so on and so forth. Also don't freak out, CASPA will calculate a GPA according to all the courses you entered. And the CASPA GPA might be a little bit different than what your academic GPA is showing. If you have issues with the CASPA GPA, you can contact them. The last section of the academic history is for standardized tests. By default, they have the GRE, the MCAT, and the TOEFL. TOEFL is for those who speak English as a second language or who were born in a country where English is not the first language. Schools want you to prove that you are proficient in English, so you should upload your scores. There's also an option to say that you don't have any standardized tests and then they will just check that off for you. You don't need to have that. Third section is for supporting information. So here you'll have the ability to upload and elaborate on evaluations, experiences, achievements, licenses, and certifications that you hold in addition to memberships. This is also the area where you'll enter in your PA school personal statement and it cannot exceed 5,000 characters. I would personally recommend that you complete your personal statement in Google Docs or Microsoft Word and then copy and paste it into CASPA. And if you guys want to see my personal statement, I run through it with you guys word for word and tell you the good, the bad, and ugly. So check out that video. The link is in the video description down below. So after all of your supporting information is entered in, you will then once again, if the schools have any supplemental stuff they want you to add into CASPA, it's all there under the program tab. After that, you essentially just proceed on through. I talk about how much money it costs to apply to PA schools and PA programs. You essentially pay the fee and then CASPA will begin its verification process, which usually takes a couple of weeks. But you should still log in periodically and check your email for any correspondences or notifications from CASPA in case they have any issues with your application. They're going to be reaching out to you guys. So you want to make sure that you take care of those issues 
in a timely fashion. So where do people go wrong with the whole CASPA application? It would be making some sort of error on your transcript entry. So make sure you double check, triple check. Secondly, it is having issues getting their letters of recommendation in on time. You could send out a max of five evaluations and most programs require at least three to consider you. I would make sure that you have four people to write you a letter. That way, in case somebody falls through the cracks, you have enough letters for PA school. You wanna give your letter writers enough time so that they can write you a good letter. They don't just slap it together last minute. Another mistake people make is applying to programs when they don't have all the prerequisites. Guys, it's spelled out for you in two or three different places, all of the classes that they require. So don't waste any money and apply to a program that you don't meet all of their requirements. You're just gonna waste money and time. Lastly, do not lie on your CASPA application. Be completely forthcoming with all of the information, with all of your credits. If you are caught, the consequences can be severe. You can be banned from CASPA. You could essentially be banned from applying to PA programs. It's not a good look. It doesn't make sense to me that you would go through all of this time and trouble getting all the prerequisites, doing all of the patient care hours, and then lie in CASPA and get banned from PA school. So don't do it. Just be completely honest with your application. And guess what? Worst case scenario, if you don't get into a PA program this year, you can apply next year with a better application and have a better chance getting into PA programs then. So guys, that's my guide on how to apply to CASPA. I think when I was applying to CASPA, it took me probably a week or two just to apply to everything and get my transcripts in there and make the payment. So give yourself enough time, apply early in the cycle. Good luck guys. I'm sure you'll get into PA school this cycle, fingers crossed. Any questions or comments can be left down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my channel. I'll be doing even more pre-PA physician assistant related content. As always guys, stay safe out there. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.